right, I'm in Portland, Maine. 157 breweries in the great state of Maine. One day, I will drink my way through all of them. For now, I'm starting with Rising Tide. I'm gonna drink a beer here and head over to One Industrial Way to see where it all started. It's one thing to go and drink a beer at a bar. It's another thing to meet the people behind it, to see the ingredients, to smell the beer being, you know, boiled. That creates this whole other connection that is so much more than just a drink in a glass. This is Epiphany. This is our flagship beer. It's a double IPA. It's a little more bitter than a lot of New England IPAs, but it's also certainly not a West Coast IPA. We decided that we were gonna call it a Maine IPA because that's where I was born. I moved here from Central Maine, started a brewery after 12 years of home brewing. So we built a little brew house and started making Belgian beer. Late 2014, we brewed Epiphany, and now we brew a lot of IPAs. And they do their best to brew them sustainably. It's how I grew up was wanting to be responsible. They started with simple things, like composting their hops and fruit. They found a farmer who could use their spent grain to feed his livestock. We're in the process of putting a silo on site so that we can reduce a lot of the plastic packaging that goes around our grain. We add a lot of hops to our beers on the hot side, and that creates kind of this green slurry that's really full of particulates. Some breweries send that slurry right down the drain, which puts a strain on wastewater treatment. So we separate that in an old super sack, which is a thousand pound grain bag. We have cut the plastic lining out of it and we put it in an old chemical drum that we drilled holes in the bottom of it and we let all the water drain out of it. The solids that are left go into a composting facility. It's like serious science. We do science here. Yeah. Breweries use carbon dioxide behind the bar to keep pressure on the taps for the perfect pour. They also use CO2 to give beer that refreshing fizz. We do our best to try to capture a lot of the CO2 that's created naturally through the uh, process of fermentation, but we can't capture quite enough to get the carbonation level to what you're drinking here. So Foundation Brewery is replacing CO2 with nitrogen. It's a big money saver and it helps the planet. A lot of carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct of burning fossil fuels, whereas the liquid nitrogen that we get is actually produced in Maine by a plant that extracts rare gases out of the atmosphere. And as a byproduct of their process, they extract a lot of nitrogen. We're just consuming... Um, what they don't need. What they don't need. Hey, Sean. Hey, what's going on, Joel? You got a beer for me? Thank you. You're very welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Yay. Nice to meet nice you. Thank you. So glad we got to connect. Yeah, finally. I enjoying that epiphany. It's incredible. <laughs> I'm having my own epiphany. In the early 80s, D.L. Geary started Geary Brewing, just a half mile down the road. Okay. First brewery to open east of the Mississippi since Prohibition ended. So when the new wave of brewing started, Allagash Brewing opened up across the street. Right. And then as another wave came in the early 2000s, in this building right here, in industrial way, on the outskirts of Portland, became like an incubator. You didn't used to be able to have people inside your breweries. You couldn't serve beer right at your brewery. So when brewers wanted to start a new brewery, they wanted to be where the experts are. This building in itself, Main Beer Company, Rising Tide, Foundation, Austin Street, Battery Steel, so many great breweries have started right here. We're a little bit outside of town, <laughs> but we're in New Gloucester, about 15 minutes northwest. This is New Brewery. I can't wait to introduce you to Russell. This is Magic. I have a flight. We are north of Portland in the middle of nowhere, beautiful countryside. It's such a great location. We have a high elevation here, great views, and we're kind of in the middle of two major cities, the coast about 14 miles that way, and then ski mountains were on the way. I started home brewing at a young age, younger than I think I was allowed to. <laughs> uh, I didn't really get passionate about it until a few years ago when I started talking about the business and all the different things that you can do and at the same time be environmentally conscious. Really focus on doing the right thing and being part of a community. What we've seen here in Maine, really rural state, we have a lot of breweries that open up downtown on their main street where the mill shut down, 
and it's been vacant, all the storefronts are vacant, the brewery opens up there, all of a sudden a coffee shop opens up, a bike shop opens up, a restaurant opens up. They've often been that harbinger of growth that's really made the difference in getting a town back on its feet. What I love about the community is they'll tell you if there's something that they don't like because they want you to be successful. Right. It's just craft beer. It's quality over quantity. So it's Tuesday afternoon. Russell, the owner, is here. Right. You can go, hey, Russell, I like this, but you know, here's how I think I'd make it better. Here's my feedback on it. You're talking to the person who can make that decision. The lighter beer in this case is our champagne lager, which is a take on American light lager. A little bit less bitter and a little bit hoppier than your normal lager. So it's gonna introduce you to hops without sending you right into an IPA. It's really for, you know, the golf cart. When you want something a little bit more flavorful on the back nine, you go for the shape one. I think you always go for champagne. This. Key Lime Goza. Oh, wow. Key Lime is a nod to South Florida. If you like a margarita, which either you're for or against margaritas. Most people are for. Yeah. yeah. And this would be the beer for you. This is better than a margarita. This makes me want to go water skiing. Nice. <laughs> yes, nice. this is a water skiing beer. This is our very drinkable vanilla coffee style. It's lighter, it's smoother, and the vanilla comes through on the back end. The coffee is not actually derived from coffee. It's derived from the malts and the roasting process. That's like the most perfect dessert. Mm. Yeah, but it's not too heavy. It's really well balanced. I would never know there's no coffee involved. The biggest thing, like any business, I think we're really focusing on not taking away from the natural beauty of where we are. We didn't want to impact the footprint. We really looked at packaging. We don't use any plastic in any of our packaging in anything that we do. You've got the cardboard on top, right? Yeah, so actually they're compostable, biodegradable ring holders. We wanted to focus on something that if it ended up in the water, in our lakes, in our streams, in the ocean, that it would actually be fish food, turtle food. It costs us a little bit more to do it, and people just get excited about it because they feel like they're contributing. Right. Drink beer, help environment. Yeah, help environment, yes. exactly. People talk about sustainability like it's some political thing. Whether you're Republican, a Democrat, an independent, you probably drink beer. It doesn't really matter what your political persuasions are. And beer is one of these things that just brings people together. When people think about wine, it's all about what region it's from. Where we think the industry will land in the long run is really that connection of place. And what's cool about Maine is we're one of the few places in the country where you can grow the hops, you can grow the malts, which are really barley, wheat, rye, grains. You can grow all of those things here in the state so we can make a truly local beer. We've had it about 100 breweries in the past 10 years here in Maine. However, craft beer is still only about 20% of the market. About 80% of the beer consumed in America is Bud, Miller, Coors, and nothing against those guys. But what's awesome is when you spread that kind of economic impact around and you have it on a main street in a rural part of Maine or in a farming community in northern Maine or even in a downtown neighborhood that just needed a little love, it's really spreading that economic impact in a way that's you know creating opportunity all around the state. A little bit of love goes a long, long way. Amen. I'll drink to that. We want breweries that will last for 100 years. And so much of that has to do with not only building sustainable business, but also making sure that the resources that we have that create this great beer are sustained. That rising tide lifts all boats kind of mentality is a hallmark of our industry. So I understand that everybody is helping each other out, but who's your favorite brewery? <laughs> it's like my favorite kid. I can't say. I, know. I, I can't know. say. You spend an afternoon canoeing on a lake or hiking up a mountain and you get to the bottom of the trail and there's a brewery right there. Uh, the best beer is the one that you have when you're thirsty and you want a beer. <laughs> and in Maine, wherever you are, there's a brewery there. <laughs>